Well, good day to all, and thank, and thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, today is the second of our series, which is entitled The Big Picture, of Midweek Lenten Services. Um, we, as a cooperative effort, we, the uh, United Methodist Churches in the Catawissa area, which is Catawissa Parish, which is Culp and RCV, uh, Catawissa First, uh, which is right in Catawissa, and the church that I am a pastor of, the pastor at uh, Bethel United Methodist Church uh, outside of Catawissa. And we have got together and decided we're going to provide a midweek reflection and meditation on various scriptures throughout the Lenten service. And as a repeat, today is our second one, and it's on the rebuking of Peter by Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know about you guys, and maybe you know what the word rebuke means, because we, we see that in the, the scripture quite often that Jesus rebuked this person or whatever. But today, Peter is rebuking Jesus. So I get on Wikipedia, online dictionary, and I look it up, and I'll read it right from my notes. <clears throat> Rebuking is to express sharp disapproval or criticism of someone because of their behavior, their actions, or their words. Hmm. Rebuking. Wow, that's strong. That's really strong. So now that I understand, and hopefully maybe some of you others under, out there understand the significance of what Peter did to Jesus, and then Jesus' justification comes back. And we'll talk about that. I have a question for you. Do you have a good friend or, or maybe have had a good friend that you can talk about anything and everything with. And nothing is sacred. It's all open on a table. And one day your friend says something that really, as the phrase goes, rubs you the wrong way. And you come back at that friend with a, with a response. But your friend was so strong in their thoughts that they actually come back on you to tell you why they said and meant such a thing. My mother, <laughs> God bless her, my mother would uh, tell me quite often, maybe you just needed to be knocked down a peg or two. Uh, yes, and that's what Jesus did to Peter today for what Peter did verbally in front of all the other disciples. So we'll get into that. A little bit later. So let's, the scripture I chose today comes from the Gospel of Matthew. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 23. And I'm reading from uh, the NIV version of the Bible. And it's my one of my favorite uh, Bibles. And uh, Let's uh, get into that. Matthew 16, 13 through 23. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah. But still others say, possibly Jeremiah or other prophets. But what about you, he said? Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by the fa my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gate of Hades will not overcome it. 
I will not I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah from that time on Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders the chief priests and the teachers of the law and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him never Lord he said this shall never happen to you and Jesus answered and said to Peter Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have the mind that concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Rebuked. Wow. This is the word of God for the people of God. And thanks be to God. <clears throat> The scripture starts out actually telling us in Matthew and in Mark and in the other Gospels where they physically were. They were in a city called Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea Philippi was in a northern region territory, <coughs> excuse me please, north of the Sea of Galilee, and it was under Greek and Roman rule. It's actually under Roman rule, but Greek culture. So there's a lot of influence of pagan worship and everything in that area. And it was uh, being governed by the Roman Emperor Philip at that time. So the city originally, when it was built, was built in honor of Caesar. Well, Philippi, what they would, what the Roman emperors would do is they would change things as they were in charge to show who was in charge. So what Philip did was had the city of uh, Caesarea totally renovated, all cleaned up, straightened out, whatever they ended up doing, building new idols, building new new structures. And he renamed it to Caesarea Philippi. So, just to give you a little idea where all this was going on. And Jesus and his disciples were walking around. And Jesus finally said, and they were preaching him as he did. And Jesus said to the disciples, who do people say I am? Well, and then the, the disciples, it doesn't say who, it says they, they, they opened up. So in other words, all the disciples that were with him opened up and said, well, some said you might be John the Baptist. And others said, well, maybe it's Elijah. Maybe you're, this guy is Elijah, come back. And others said, no, maybe it's uh, Jeremiah or other prophets. Then Jesus drops the big question. Who do you say I am? Not the people around us. Not the people through the towns and villages and everything that where I've been teaching and preaching. Who do you say I am? Well, Simon Peter, in his Simon Peter way, jumps right up and says, Well, you're the Messiah. You're the son of our living God. Jesus said, yeah. Jesus says, you most definitely are. You are right, Peter. And he blessed Peter. He gave him a blessing. And he says that you're re this was revealed to you from my Father in heaven, not from humans around us. And Jesus go goes on and tell Peter, you're going to be the foundation of my church. And I'm going to give you the keys to heaven. And whatever you say goes here, goes in heaven and whatever. 
Wow. Wow. That was something big. Do you think, <laughs> I'll get another phrase from my mother. Don't let your head get too big because your hat band won't fit. Another one. Your head gets big because he was being pumped up so much by Jesus. To tell him what all is going to happen. But Jesus again speaks the truth. And Peter was thinking of, wow, I'm the one. I'm the bestest of, bud of Jesus. Well, Jesus then goes on and he's telling the, the disciples that, that conversation through in other conversations, preparing them for the upcoming day that the chief elders, the priests, and the teachers of the law are going to become his true enemy. And they're going to put him into a mock trial. They're going to persecute him, beat him to near death, hang him on a cross, and kill him. But on the third day, Jesus is also telling the disciples, you are going to see me rise to life again. Well, they all could not quite fathom, I should say, or understand what Jesus was telling them. But Peter, again, in his Peter fashion, stands up and says, that's not going to happen to you. you got to stop saying those kind of things. That's not what's going to happen. Your Father in Heaven won't allow that to happen. I'm paraphrasing, by the way. And Jesus says, Peter, so sorry for you, Peter, because get behind me, you evil one. You're a stumbling block for me right now with those kind of thoughts. You're wrong. You are thinking like a human being. You're not thinking like my Father in heaven. Wow. Did that proverbially just take the wind right out of Peter's sail? I'm sure any one of us, if we'd have been there, would have been humbled to embarrassment. Because Peter thought he was right in there. He was the best bud of Jesus. He just said he was going to be my, the foundation of my church. And then he goes and does this to me. What are we to think? Well, we have a video right now that I'd like to uh, uh, go to and, and watch the video. And let's see what uh, our video helps us uh, maybe better understand a little bit of what's going on. And then uh, we'll come back and we'll close. You know what it felt like? Um, it felt like dad strength. You know, when you were a kid and you're wrestling with your dad, you know, and he's just taking all the hits and he's toying with you, and then boom, he just takes you down. Jesus set in me straight that day. It, it felt a lot like that. Okay, okay, I know, I know. Hindsight is 2020, but at that time and at that moment, I, I just couldn't figure out what he was talking about, you know? I mean, why did he have to suffer? Why did he have to die? No, 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 not, not on my watch. This wasn't gonna happen, no sir. It just wasn't like he was, he was thinking straight, you know? I kept thinking maybe he's dehydrated, maybe he's hungry. The man never got enough to eat, if you ask me. So I take him aside and I start get laying into him. And before I could even get very far, he stops me, looks me in the eyes, cause he has those eyes. And you know what he said to me? Get behind me, Satan. Dad strength. Those words, those eyes, that moment floored me. He floored me. <sighs> but I mean, seriously, get behind me, Satan. All right, I admit I have some flaws, you know, but Satan, I mean, that stung a bit, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I just didn't get it. I just didn't see the whole picture. 
which won't be the last time that'll happen, mind you. <laughs> you see, I, I wanted him to use that, that dad strength on the world, you know? I mean, my desires, my plans. And your boy, Peter's plans, they don't always work out so good, i.e. ear slicing, etc. But he knew, he knew all along, <laughs> he would give us just enough rope for allow us to figure things out for ourselves. And then he just, he had that dad strength, you know? He'd pull us back in. Right at that moment, we needed saving from ourselves. That was his plan all along. Saving us from ourselves. Saving me from myself. So what do you think of the video? Very heartfelt, very humbling, great message. Jesus told Peter that his thoughts are not God's thoughts. And that human, humans as we are, we are not flawless. We don't know it all. We think we do, and that's when we get ourselves in trouble. Jesus had to set Peter back to keep him straight and on the narrow path to heaven. Because his head was getting a little too big. You know, Peter ended up being the first great leader of the church in Jerusalem. And later in his, in his writing, Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 6. Peter wrote, he tells that the church of Jesus Christ, that Jesus is the cornerstone of the foundation the cornerstone of any foundation is the first stone set. And the foundation is built from there. And Peter goes on to say in those verses that the apostles and the prophets are significant foundation stones to Christ's church. Peter has humbled himself. Peter finally saw the big picture. And then he goes on to say that the believers, the believers, you and me, are continuing to build the foundation of Jesus Christ Church. This message today is about faith and believing and obeying our God. With God, all things are possible through the glory of him. I want to close today. I went to the Old Testament, to the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. Again, reading from my Bible. Isaiah, chapter 55, <clears throat> verses 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than earth, so are my ways higher than yours, your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Isaiah one of the prophets that uh, was spoken of got it right. The Lord told him, our thoughts are not God's thoughts. It's hard to keep not thinking about the human humanness that we have as uh, disciples 
of Jesus Christ. Let us uh, close with a word of prayer. And this uh, reflection will be over for today. Loving and gracious Father, thank you all that you have given us here on this earth. What is ours is yours. Thank you for the leadership and guidance that your son Jesus Christ has given to us. Thank you, Lord, for humbling us when we think we know it all. We are here as the disciples of Christ to help build his church. We are here to honor your glory and not ours. We are here for you, O Lord. Jesus has left the Holy Spirit here for us to lead us and guide us until he returns again. We must listen for the prompting of the Spirit to walk in your ways and not ours. In Christ's name, amen. I'm glad you stopped in today. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to uh, to uh, have a little reflection, midweek reflection with you. Um, stop in next week for uh, third in the series of uh, midweek services of the, uh, the big picture, as it's called. In Christ's name, amen.